the thing is, is, there's nothing formal about this and there's nothing groundbreaking about it. But I found it, um, the reason, this particular thing that I'm talking about is when I was considering getting PMAX from this face-to-face -face workshop that we do for eight hours at a time and getting it to this virtual space that we found ourselves in. And I really angst about it for, you know, from everything from how I certainly can't have people sitting on Zoom for eight hours. That is just not realistic. How do I break this up? Just what do I do? And just out of nowhere, like a miracle, and it really was, um, somebody from the president's office emailed Elizabeth. A, a company was offering a free webinar um, on, you know, transitioning from face-to-face -face or in-person to virtual. So I did this three day and it was six hours each day workshop on this theme. And so that's where these things came from. And I have to say from my vantage point and from some feedback that I got from other people that PMAX workshop went off really well in terms of how it worked. Um, so, okay. So in person to virtual effectively engaging your audience when physically distanced. Don't you love that title? <laughs> Just say yes. Or give me a thumbs up. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I can't move my slide. Okay. So one of the first things that we were taught in this, it wasn't really taught. This workshop was very cleverly done in that everything was demonstrated. And then you were given the lesson after it was demonstrated. So it was really nice because you were engaged in these things. You didn't really know where they were going. And then you realized they were teaching you a lesson the whole time. So it was really nice. The, 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 the first thing we learned or did was to have a theme to whatever you do. And I get it. Harish, you're probably one of the first ones I think of in terms of, are you kidding? Do you realize the content I have to give, get across here? I don't need anything. I just need to move along. But I think it works if you understand kind of how to approach it. And I think back to when I was teaching biology 1240, um, and I remember coming across certain topics that were just challenging um, in terms of, you know, once the students got to this particular thing, it, it was going to get pretty tight. And so um, all this is in choosing a theme is having these markers along the way. You are not even going to necessarily tell your audience or your class that it's a theme. You're going to kind of play it out as it goes along. So for this one, I chose a finish the race theme. Not that I would say that, but that's what I'm thinking. So maybe in your first class session, you can use, you know, your start. You know what, Harish? I really want to use your, remind me, Harish, of how to use the, the pointer. Left hand bottom, mm -hmm. uh, pen. I'm trying to, see. I'll close that. It's a PowerPoint slide, right? Yes. So left hand bottom, pen. Pen bottom. I don't see it. Really? And is that is that something, uh, Harish? Because I want to learn how to do that too. That way you can kind of have a okay. little highlighter around. Is that let something? Me, that let me. Is that shall I? The host can do. Uh, shall I show you in a slide uh, from my computer? Yeah. Let me unshare. Okay. And while he's doing that, Tara, I'm going, just because my uh, hotspot battery is running a bit low, I'm going to uh, probably uh, turn off my video, but I'm here and fully engaged. Gotcha. Thank I'll you. I'll make sure you know it via the chat. <laughs> okay. Nice slide, Sarish. Okay, can you now? Ah, uh... uh, you're in presentation mode. Got it. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I don't think I'm in it, and so I'm gonna because because of the two screens I have, presentation mode gets a little quirky. So okay. 
yeah, I, I would have to figure some things out. So thank you. But so now, that so so that's presentation mode from PowerPoint, and then you can just use that cool. and. Tier could point to what she's want to do, right? Right. Go to pen, and pen has several options. One is okay. uh, laser okay. pointer. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you very much. Yes, no thank you. The other thing too that I don't know, Elizabeth, if you if you may have shared, but in PowerPoint, one of the annoying things that I found is that whenever you go and do a PowerPoint, and you it goes to the entire screen. So if you go to the presentation mode, you can actually fit it in the window instead. And that way, if your screen is large enough, you can have the window of your PowerPoint open on one, and then you can actually have your participant on the other. So I learned that from Amanda a couple of days ago. And is that is that using that advanced feature that you go to share and you do advanced, you just go share the portion of my screen and then you just share the slides? Um, it's actually in, in PowerPoint. So maybe at the end, if, if there's interest, I can, I can show that. Okay, thank you. Excellent. I love these tips from everybody. So this is a group of tips. <laughs> so great. And this will actually help um, uh, uh, Jay and I for our workshop coming up. We might incorporate. So thank you. Yes. Okay. So I just pulled a bunch of icons um, that you can use, not necessarily. And I like to, you'll see later, place things like in the corner. For example, let's say you come to a concept um, that you're teaching and you from the history of teaching know this concept is going to be just muddy for students. It's, it's going to take some effort. You can put that little icon on your slides or in your information to kind of give students a heads up. And I honestly, I consider this as I was kind of integrating what I was learning in this workshop versus what I know as um, a faculty developer, I kind of see it as transparency. You're, you're giving your students a heads up about what's coming and you're really being um, honest, nah, honest is a quirky word, but about what's coming and the challenge of what's coming without scaring them, without sending them into a panic and say, hey, I recognize this material can be a challenge. So this is how we're going to approach it. So anyway, these icons help to reinforce your theme as, you know, as you move through. Just that simple. So now, um, um, here before we move to the next thing with the themes, did, did they recommend you do a theme like for like, I'm just thinking, you know, so I've got 28 days of class, right? So coming up mm -hmm. with 28 themes might be hard, but so would it be like a theme for each unit, a theme for each that like is an, entire course? Like what? That's an excellent point. So you can do a, clearly what works best for you, but this was in terms of the theme for the entire thing whatever that thing is. So if it's the course, if it's, uh, for me, it was three days of workshops. Um, Excellent. So Thanks. yes, it's, it's along the course from the start line. And again, I'm going back to my race theme, I'm not necessarily your theme, but from the start line or from the start to the finish. And then you have all of these markers along the way to help students see how they progress and when they come across obstacles and things like that. That makes total sense. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so now I'm shifting to Zoom. Um, Xavier, hap, you know, use, everybody knows Xavier uses Zoom, which I'm starting to read on pod about the, um, what is it, Microsoft, what is it, Jay? I know you know. Ah, oh, come on, or Janice. Microsoft, the Microsoft Teams. Teams, Teams thank yeah. you. And I was reading about the advantages and the limitations of Teams, and I'm like, this is this seems pretty good. But anyway, Xavier uses Zoom, so that's where we are. And it just so happens it was very nice. These people who put on this workshop knew all of these platforms. I mean, they could talk to you about any of the platforms, but fortunately, our workshop was conducted in Zoom, so I got to see a lot of the things in action. And this, what you're seeing right here, is the annotation toolbar in Zoom. And this can go a long way to help you in a lot of ways um, in, your, in whatever you're doing. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay with class because that's what most people here are interested in. Can go a long way to help you in your class um, in terms of not just engagement, but also um, the assessing where your students' learning is in that given moment. Um, we when um, 
oh, her name is leaving me. That's such a shame. Sue Franz. When Sue Francis come to Xavier, she's always giving us these great apps and technology tools that you can use in the class in real time to see where your students stand and, and try to move your pedagogy along. Um, and actually, you can do the same thing with these annotation tools. Well, with the tools in Zoom, the annotation tool is just one of them. So the first thing um, I recommend before we get into the annotation tool is giving your students an orientation to it. Um, I found when I had my first classes this week, um, I, most of the students actually were very knowledgeable of Zoom, but I still had a couple who were putting in chat, um, I, I'm not sure how to do that or I, where is that? And so giving your students a brief say, you know, here is how you get to this, this is what this does, and all of the tools, not just the annotation tool, but having this, a screenshot up there and being able to show them um, what they should see and how they can use it will go a long way in helping you to use that tool as you move throughout the semester. And so I'm not going to take the time to do that because everybody in here knows how to use the annotation tool, but this is just for illustration. But I want to show you a particular use of the annotation tool. So think of particularly um, being in a class. I know I have uh, 26 and 27 students in my two classes, respectively. Um, and in a, in a virtual environment like Zoom, having everybody speak up on mic is not necessarily the best way to go. But you still want to make sure, number one, behind that camera, they're there. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> that they're there and that they are learning what you are trying to convey. And so this is called a slide board. And all it is, as um, you can think of in terms of the whiteboard in Zoom that you, know, you can draw on and write on, you can annotate. Well, this is just a slide board and you can do the same thing. So what I'm going to ask is that everybody pull up their annotation tool and um, I'll pull up the, find the menu where the annotate is and click it so that you'll pull up the tool that has your mouse select, text, draw, whatever it is. There, well, there we go. And so in this class, the question is when going from in-person to virtual, what did you do differently? But that question can be anything depending on the course that you're teaching. What you're really interested in is getting the feedback from your students. And you have them get those annotation tools and have them answer whatever it is you want them to answer. It allows them to do it simultaneously. Sometimes you may, as the person who's controlling it, sometimes people write over each other, but that's okay. You have the ability to click on it and move it out of the way. Um, and if for some reason you find that you're having issues with people annotating when they're not supposed to, you can on the spot turn it off and turn it back on when, you know, you're ready to use it. So, um, it's, again, it's something and it serves multiple purposes. It makes sure that, you know, you can see, all right, I should have at least 27 responses here, but I'm only seeing 13. I need, I need folks to speak up. I need, and, um, you know, make sure they are engaged, make sure um, of what they're learning. So are they really understanding what I'm trying to convey based on the answers that I'm getting? And many times in PMAX, what I found was once I saw a response on the annotation board, I actually invited people to unmike and elaborate on what they said. Um, and that really was sort of, it was unexpected. It was nothing I planned to do. But when I saw certain responses, I was like, interesting. And I asked people to come on, whom, whomever wrote this, can you come on and elaborate on that? And that really worked out well. So it's, uh, I've got two questions about this, uh, Tira, is, um, so is this just a, this is just a PowerPoint slide you created that we get to write on, right? So it's that not, special, you said slide board, but it's not a special tool. It's just, you just created a slide board in PowerPoint. Thank you. That is absolutely correct. There's nothing special about this. This is a blank slide and I created the lines and the words. So you and, can do whatever you want. And then for the orientation to it, 
um, you know, again, did you like, I know what you did in, in, um, in, uh, T Max. Is that what you'd recommend? Did you do like screenshots of it to kind of show them or we, I think you just walked us through it and let us struggle for a minute. And then, then we all knew, and then we were okay. The rest of the seminar, is that what you did? Yeah. Well, for, yeah, for my, I didn't do the screenshots for my class. I talked them through it. Um, and and told them okay this is where this is i gave them a minute so i didn't take the time to even do the screenshots i'm like okay is there anybody who's not finding it put it in chat and let me know and we I always had a couple of people but that worked out fine because eventually everybody was up to speed and because i wanted i want to do this this particular activity next class and so uh with 20 25 students i can just most of them, yeah, they'll do this. They'll be messy. That's okay, right? Right, good. right. Okay, good. That's exactly right. And if, again, if you see people writing over each other, you have the ability to just say, okay, I'm going to move this over. We're kind of, you know, so it's fine. And then, um, so there's everybody's annotations. And when I am ready to move on, um, I can clear it. You also, what I like about this, and I saved a few of them from PMAX. I didn't expect to, but um, I, I told the participants, you have the ability to save that slide board. Just like when you exit out of Zoom and that chat is immortalized for you such that you can save it. Well, you can save the slide board that way and it's in the same folder as that chat and all of those annotations are there. If you as the instructor want to take that away and say, okay, let me see where my students' heads are. What do I need to adjust? But you don't want to take the time to figure that out real time. You can save that or your students can save it. It's like, if this is of interest to you, if you find this helpful, go ahead and save it. And, you know, it's on that same bar. The save option is on that same bar where all of the other tools are. I love this as a, uh, so we do Kahoot, but this mm -hmm. is so much easier because I don't have to switch back and forth. So I can just put a true and false question or I can put a, right. you know, a ABCD and then just go in there and it's a, like a poll everywhere in class. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what, exactly the point. That's what I was just thinking, Carrie, because I did a, a poll everywhere yesterday, which would have been, uh, could have been d done this just as easily this way. Yep. Thank you for your continued annotations. I'm going to clear those and let's move on. And Tiara, I forgot. Um, can you um, identify who is writing what on these? So you cannot unless you make, um, so you can ask them, go ahead and put your name next to what you're going to write, but that's the only way. Mm -hmm. So you can't just by looking, I have no idea who wrote what I would guess. Is Carla in here? Because I saw Carla. Yeah. <laughs> name up there <laughs> but like you know okay, other than so that would be the downfall yeah. if y'all are having a track in your poll everywhere or whatever for some reason yeah no for these that's what i want is i want anonymous anonymous oh, okay yes. mm -hmm. yeah and um, and if go ahead i'm sorry elizabeth but, but i could easily see like let's say i wanted to gather i would just say put your initials by it you know with that small that small yeah. class put your initials by it or if i wanted it I want it, but I didn't want them to have it. I might say put your last five digits or some some of like that. But I but I like doing the anonymous polls. Yeah, it's and and it was the same thing in Pmax. I know when I asked, you know, I said I don't know who wrote this, but I, I, if you don't mind coming on, Mike, and it's the same with the students. It's like, um, you know, if you don't mind, I you give them the option. But yeah, the anonymous, I think, makes people freer, including students, to um, be, be honest in, in, in whatever they're, they're writing, even if they, they might be wrong. You don't really know who I am, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, since Kim brought that up, let me just share something that I did yesterday that I thought worked really nicely. And that was um, normally in class, I have them, I give out little cards or ask their pronouns and I ask, you know, various things. Uh, and one thing is I just say, tell me any circumstances you want me to know to help me help you learn better this semester. Like if there's anything going on that you just would like me to know so I can make your learning experience stronger. And yesterday I did that in the private chat. I said, private chat me any circumstance that you want me to know. And if you don't have anything, just say hey to me in the private chat. And 
And it was just, wow, I'm so glad I did it. So those of you teaching, I'm so glad I did it. Can't imagine the stuff um, that that faculty are, or, sorry, that students are, are dealing with. You know, I've, I just had, you know, students who have had, anyway, you know, what you expect, recent deaths in the family, caregiving, just wow, some stuff. So, I, so and then I was able to save that chat and now I've got that in my notes so that I can kind of just check in on them periodically. And, and I did all that via private chat. That's all I want to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I have to, I, this came from Janice, I, I believe. I got to give a shout out. Um, I set up the forum in my online classes. And um, Elizabeth, a few years ago, I remember her saying, anything of a personal nature, you come to me. But if it's not a personal please post it to the chat. If you're asking, other people probably want to know too. And that has been going really, really well um, in terms of having students post all their questions and I go to the forum and answer them. So thank you. I, love, I really appreciate that. All right. All right. So the next thing that we learned although they didn't deal with our specific content. Um, and yes, you are getting PMAX slides because all of this happened for me in the context of PMAX. Um, but they touched on our content in terms of making sure you keep people engaged in what you can do face-to-face -face versus what you can do virtually and be effective. So this is one of my slides that I have had for years. Um, in PMAX when we were doing the in-person workshop. And what I learned during um, this face-to-face -to, -face to virtual workshop is that this is the kind of stuff that can sink you. So these wordy slides where you have people sitting there reading, they're reading, they're not paying attention to you. This is the kind of stuff you want to avoid. You want to keep your audience, your students, as visually engaged as you possibly can. So once I learned that, I converted that slide to this. So I found a um, image that I wanted and I made and built what I had to say around that image. But I kept the words minimal such that um, people were listening to me and kind of focused on the image as opposed to reading all the 60 billion words I had on the previous slide. And these are just more examples of how, um, once again, one of my previous slides where, you know, I'm standing up there talking and it's okay because I'm in front of you, I'm moving, we're right there in the room together, but it's very different online. And so this is what I turned that into. And it was more focused on what I was saying with little touch points on the slide. And one more example. I was proudest of this, you guys. I really was, because I'm like, once I sat in that workshop, I'm like, Tiara, your slides suck. And I converted it to what you see here. So um, the whole point of that is be cognizant of, you know, you're delivering your content, but in an online or a virtual environment, be cognizant of how that content comes across what you're encouraging in your students based on what you have on the screen in terms of, am I encouraging them to sit here and read a whole lot and not really pay attention to what I'm saying? Am I encouraging them because it's words swimming on the screen and they go off and do something else? So that's the point there. Um, back to Zoom tools, I know I'm going back and forth. Um, but back to Zoom tools, the nonverbal feedback is as effective as, for example, the slide board in terms of getting that real-time quick assessment of where your audience is on a given topic. And this is, again, you can see the raise hand, yes, no, go slower, go faster, when someone's away, thumbs up, thumbs down. And it's just a matter of letting students know that that nonverbal feedback is there. And I, I do switch it up. I'm like, okay, I need everybody. I think what, what was one of the first things I wanted to know when we first got into class on Wednesday, I wanted to know who was coming out of high school 
That's what I wanted to know because I wanted to say some things about how their senior year in high school was affected by COVID. And I understand, you know, I wanted to show some empathy to them in terms of I understand what a rough time you've had ending high school and beginning college. So I did just that. I'm like, by a show of hands, and I told them where it was, where the raised hand was, how they could do it. I'm like, who is who graduated from high school in the spring of 20? And so it gave me, <clears throat> excuse me, a quick, you know, look at how my wh- who composed my class and how I needed to direct my my words. So. Just out of curiosity, Tier, was it most of them? Yes. I had a handful who just a few who had had previous college experience. So clearly they were not coming out of high school, but the vast majority of them were, had graduated in the spring of 20. Um, and here on out, I'm going to talk about other Zoom tools. Um, again, I think you, you guys probably know about them, but I found them very effective, particularly for PMAX. And I, you know, <clears throat> one of the things I was reading about Teams, Microsoft Teams, is that they don't have breakout rooms, which somebody said Microsoft was working on, but they have the ability to um, create different channels where you can sort of do the same thing and not only create different channels, but you can share, have a shared document among students. And unlike breakout rooms, you can't do that. Um, but again, this is what we're working in now. I have teams on the brain since I started reading about it. Um, but the breakout rooms in terms of giving your students the opportunity to work in those smaller groups that I think we all find helpful. You, you want to break up that class. Um, you don't have the ability. I didn't put it in here. I learned it as I went. I did learn it in the workshop, but the breakout rooms are great, but they have their limitations. One of them is if you give your audience or your students um, a prompt or a mandate. If they don't remember it from being in the main room, it doesn't follow them. So uh, we in CAT figured out way in the spring, you can actually put that into chat so that they can see, you know, you know, the chat will follow them to the breakout room. And what I learned in the workshop was that you don't have to type it into chat. You can actually upload a document, whatever that document is. It can be an Excel word sheet. It could, it could be whatever you want it to be. And you can upload that to chat. And because chat follows you to the breakout room, they can then get that document out of chat and they can work in the document as a group. So that helps with the limitation of not being able to have that shared document the way Teams does. But you can, let's say you have a particular, like you would have an Excel spreadsheet you want each team to work in. You can upload it um, and name them for that, that group of people, and they can work with that document once they get to the breakout room. So something nice that I learned. Hey, Tira, I'm going to serve as your voice of the chat. Um, <laughs> so uh, Jay just put a really good idea in the chat, which is, um, oh, sorry. I don't for know those Janice. Janice just put a really good idea in the chat. Um, that while you don't have shared documents in Zoom, you can use a shared Google Doc for the participants to work on in a breakout room. And I will definitely use that. And I also just wanted to caution everybody that, um, yeah, because we, we do this a lot uh, and you have used this a lot in CAT and it works using the chat, but you have to put it in there before you um, put them in the rooms. You can't do it after the fact. So if you're going to put anything in the chat, do it first then put them in the rooms because I made that mistake. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and what you see here is my breakout and it's fuzzy because I could not find these icons to save my life. So I had to create them myself off of my own Zoom. So these are my create my icons. But I use the icons in PMAX um, to let my participants know what was coming up. So if I knew we were going to do a breakout room, then I would put that icon on the slide. And I, I told the participants at the very beginning, you know, watch out for these icons because this is going to tell you what's coming up and what we're about to do. Um, we use, because of the size um, of the workshop, 
um, I had participants power up and power down their cameras um, a lot. And so I used the icons to ask them, you know, when to power your camera off, when to power your camera up. It helps to save words, but again, it makes participants feel like they know what's going on and keeps them engaged to the point where they're like, what, I'm lost, what are you doing? How do I do that? So it's just, again, it's that going back to that transparency when your students know what's coming or, oh, I know when I see that, this is what's gonna happen and this is what I do. It gives them a sense of confidence and engagement in the class. So chat, we all know how the chat can be helpful. Um, so I don't really have to spend a whole lot of time on that, but I do, I will say just as Elizabeth just said, I will serve as your voice of the chat. That is so helpful. And particularly if you have one of those large classes, it can be a little quirky because asking a student to do it who's a part of the class, it can distract them from their learning. So you have to consider that. Or if you want to invite someone else in your class who happens to be available to be your voice of the chat, it really, really helps. Um, uh, two things I'll, I will say about that for my one week of experience of this so far is um, uh, I have had, I've just asked for a volunteer voice of the chat and had a student do it. My class is kind of, you know, because I'm teaching mixed mode, I only have had about maybe 14, 16 people online. So it's been, it's, it's been manageable and I haven't, I asked the student, did she feel distracted and uh, no. each day and they said, they said no. Um, so that, you know, that seems to work. And then because I do so much it kind of activities and group work, I kind of check in on the chat while students are getting in groups. I check in on the chat and be sure everything got covered. The other thing is, um, I was going to say though, in really large classes like pharmacy, that's where they're actually pairing up and bringing somebody in. They're bringing in a colleague nice. to be a, a voice of the chat because, you know, they're, they're talking, you know, 150 plus people at a time. Yeah, exactly. Um, I got to the point with 20, you know, 26 students with everything that was going on, I found myself saying, you know what, um, I may not, I had to tell my students, I said, I don't want to miss anybody's questions. Sometimes my eye is not on the chat. Feel free if I, if you see I missed your question, come on mic and, and let me know what your question is. I found myself having to do that because I wasn't being, I wasn't able to keep up with the chat. And I had to acknowledge that and give them another option for asking what they needed to ask. Um, polls, uh, same thing. I did not set up a poll, but everybody has seen them. Again, another great tool to get some quick um, feedback from your students about whatever it is you want to know. Um, and you set those up ahead of time. It's really simple. I mean, it, you're not going to do any elaborate polling, but they are really simple to set up. You put your questions in and you pull those up and you can get that real time feedback. Um, so, and again, this is the polls icon. When a poll is coming up, put that icon on your slide and let your students know we're about to do, we're about to conduct a poll. So be on the lookout. Oh, that was it. So that was just all the images I pulled. 